Hi, I'm Jen Masongarb. I'm the Director of Interpretation and Research at the Chicago Architecture Foundation. And I'm standing here in front of the Hull House on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago. You know the Hull House from sort of history and Jane Addams and their work, their pioneering work with um, social reform. But today we're going to talk about how the social scientists um, from the University of Chicago partnered with Hull House activists to look at ways to use maps to document the neighborhood in order to sort of look at how the existing conditions in the neighborhood could be better in terms of sanitation, in terms of um, density, light, air, all those things were documented through careful, careful study. And so we're going to go inside and we're going to see some of those maps. And it was in this building that Adams and Gates started to plan for all of the big complex of things that would evolve beyond the single building. And so the Hull House is known for things that all uh, provided new immigrants to this area uh, ways to get acclimated to the country, to the city. So everything from job training to language skills to art classes to housekeeping skills, all the things, all those things were taught taught here to to um, residents of the neighborhood. And what we're standing in front of are two maps that were produced in conjunction with the University of Chicago's School of Social Service Administrations. Those sociologists came to this neighborhood, worked with Adams and the uh, social reformers here, and were trying to document the existing conditions of residents here in the neighborhood. So these two maps here that I'm standing in front of, this first one looks at nationalities. And so um, surveyors uh, went house to house to house, asked a couple key questions about who lived there. And so this is the neighborhood we're standing in here, um, out, outside us. And the dark blue that you see here in the map are Italians. And sort of this area down here is sort of a mix of um, Russian and Poles in, um, uh, to this edge of the map. But it's sort of, they're trying to look for patterns. They're also trying to look for um, uh, just an understanding of, of who, who is living there. This other map uh, that's in, in front of me looks at wage earnings per week. And so um, the darker the color, the less they earn, the lighter the color, the more they earn. They also indicate brothels on this map, which I find kind of interesting. Um, but between wages and between nationalities and a couple other key questions they asked about, do you have access to plumbing? And how many people are living here? And how are you cooking? And what methods are you cooking with? Um, how are you heating your house? All those things were done um, to capture that data in a very sophisticated way, but then also to advocate for change. So new tenement codes resulted out of that in the early 20th century that provided basic minimums for access to plumbing, um, a number of people per uh, dwelling, um, and also uh, better access to light and air. Institute of Chicago to look at another example of how data is used and collected, how it has been historically in our city, but this time for a very different purpose than what we saw at the Hull House. In the late 1930s and into the 1940s, the Works Progress Administration, in conjunction with the Chicago Plan Commission, under did, uh, underwent a study of the neighborhood just to the west of Hull House, so at Halstead and Roosevelt. And what they were looking at was documenting the neighborhood for the purpose of putting in uh, the new, what was then called the Cong Congress Expressway, what we know today as the Eisenhower. And the goal of all this documentation was really to show that the neighborhood was in poor condition and then therefore it could be torn down to make, right, to make room for the, the right of way of the freeway. And so we've got some historic photos of some of the buildings that were documented here and all of the careful calculations for everything uh, in terms of um, the average monthly rental, the age of the building, the, what buildings are owned or occupied, and then the condition of the building. I think the sad irony here is that we're seeing very similar methodologies for data collection and also similar neighborhood, uh, but for a very, very different purpose than the Hull House papers. This was obviously used to advocate for demolition, whereas the Hull House maps and uh, with the University of Chicago 
uh, sociologists were used to advocate for improvements. It's interesting to consider also about the data that's being collected by us and about us today, and how will that be interpreted in 50, 100 years from now? What will people be looking at and parsing through the data and making decisions, new plans for the city, new, new uh, ideas? And perhaps our data will be used for ways that we can't even imagine.